Today I'll be setting up a digital audio workstation for recording music. I'm going to start from scratch using an old computer and nothing but free software. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel folks, my name's Shane. I'm not gonna make this video over technical, but what I can tell you is, if you wanna find out the exact process that I'm using to do all of this in detail, I'll put a link in the description through to my website at guitarpedaldemos.com, and you can follow the how-to tutorial guide there as well. So let's get into it. I've been recording music for years and I've been using Nuendo now for such a long time. It's a really great piece of software. For those who haven't heard of it, it's basically Cubase. This is not a free piece of software by any stretch of the imagination but I've had it for such a long time, produced many albums for myself and other people on it. I thought it was time to give something else a little bit of a shot. So we're not using Windows at all today. We're gonna to be installing Ubuntu Studio on this, which is a Linux distribution. Now this particular computer is an AMD FX8350 CPU. It's an eight core CPU. It's got 16 gig of RAM, one solid state drive and one old school mechanical storage drive. So let's get into it. Anytime you install Ubuntu or any Linux distribution, make sure you've got your ethernet cable plugged in. It just saves the headache of trying to work out how to update the system at a later date. Step one was downloading Ubuntu Studio and then putting it on this USB stick. If you wanna know the process about that, I'll leave a link up in the cards to my tech channel and you can follow along there. So let's plug this in. Now, as we start the computer, we wanna hit F12 on the keyboard. Now, to get to the boot selection screen, I need to push F12 on this particular computer. Just follow along on the screen. It will tell you what you need to do to select the boot devices. Now, once you get into this boot selection screen, just select this one right here. You wanna make sure it's the UEFI one. And then we wanna to go to install. One of the best things about Linux as well as Apple Macs is the fact that if you get an external sound card like this, this is the Behringer UMC 22, you can basically just plug it in and wait for it to light up. Boom, and there we go, it works. That's it, no drivers required, nice and simple. All right, so I've got the operating system up and running and it just took me a minute to familiarize myself with how to capture the screen. So hopefully it all works, it's my first time using it. And the interesting thing about Ubuntu Studio, I haven't used it for such a long time. I tested it years ago, and it's really quite a bit different to Ubuntu desktop. And I've used the server a lot over the years as well, but this particular version is very different, and it looks like it comes with everything you could possibly need. You have audio production, graphic design, video production, just about everything you could possibly need here for different types of things. I'll be doing all the video editing on my Mac this time around, but I may actually revisit this and do a follow-up video on my tech channel about video editing on Ubuntu Studio. I think that might make for some cool videos as well. So one of the great things about this is if you go to audio production here, look at all the different options. The one that we basically want to use is Adore 5. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's like D-A-W basically. So here we go. Let's set this up. Now I've used this just recently. Um, where do I want to store everything? Yeah, look, I'll just, I'll just use it, my home folder for now. Um, yep. All right, just keep clicking. I don't have any plugins. We want to call this one uh, test. All right, so on this screen right here is where you want to select ALSA if you're using an external sound card, which I am, and it's required. So that's what you want to do. You want to also go to USB audio codec, and that will enable the ability to record straight into the program using whatever external sound card you have. So a little tip there, you can change the sample rate to 48 kilohertz, but I always do 44.1, it seems to work fine. The audio buffer size here as well, the buffer rate, um, I'm gonna leave that at 1024 right now as well. Supposedly the kernel in Ubuntu Studio is slightly faster for this kind of stuff. I don't know if that's true or not, I haven't used it enough yet to know, but let's start this project, so here we go. And here it is, this is the fully fledged DAW, Digital Audio Workstation. And this is great. So essentially we can add as many tracks as we like here. Let's add five. Oh, my number locks off. It's always the way. So there we go, we have an unlimited amount of tracks and that's pretty sweet. And it, just to be sure too, let's see if this has, I'm sure it's got everything that we need here. 
All right, it doesn't look like we have system monitor. Let's just type in monitor, see if it comes up. No, all right. Got to uh, see some nerd stuff here. <laughs> uh, I haven't used this for a while, so we'll see if I can still remember all the stuff. Don't worry if you're not a nerd, you don't need to worry about this. I just wanna see what sort of system resources we're using here. And this is a very simple system resource monitor called HTOP, which just went missing, there it is. And as you can see, I'm actually screen recording right now as well. So a lot of the CPU usage would be uh, from that. But if I was to stop it, you'd notice that the CPU usage would actually drop. So. I think what I'm gonna do now is maybe just record a couple of guitar tracks straight into the Behringer, straight into this program. I'll film it, I'll edit it on the Mac, and then we should be good to go. So let's make some noise. Let's do it, I'm excited. I was just noodling around, that's by far my finest playing ever, that was terrible. But anyway, it works, it works. I got the latency down, the buffer to about 512 and that seemed to fix all the issues there as well. So what you're about to hear or what you just heard, I should say, I haven't done it yet, but I will, is the audio will be mixed on here, exported to a WAV file, sent to my Mac, and then I would have synced it up. So yeah, what can I tell you? It works, easy. So overall, what's my opinions on Ubuntu Studio just for doing audio production? And although this is really early days, I can tell already how easy it is to use if you've used any of these type of programs before. I did have to just change the buffer rate. That was the only adjustment I made. I worked out how to set the levels and do a little bit of a pan there on the guitar track. The cool thing about YouTube, the internet, and all that kind of stuff is the fact you'll actually be able to find any tutorial you like online about how to do this, how to do that, Find the instruction manuals if you need to and just find out all the answers to your questions when it comes to e editing and mixing your own music. So this is a really viable uh, thing to use even while doing the screen capture, it didn't struggle. And like I said, this computer is kind of old but it's still not a bad computer. It's the same one I use for all my other digital audio workstation on my uh, Windows computer. So it's essentially exactly the same system. I built two of them at the same time. This used to be a streaming computer and I think it will do pretty well at doing this with Linux. I can't see why not. I didn't crash, I didn't have any problems with anything at all. So it all looks like it works extremely well. Um, yeah. I also have a tech channel at Geeky Nerdy Techie. If you wanna see how this performs, not this particular piece of software, but Ubuntu Studio for video editing, odds are I'll probably do a video about that coming up as well. And I've got a basis for comparison. I'm an ex-PC guy when it comes to video editing. And now I've moved over to Mac. So we're gonna see whether or not Linux can deliver the goods in terms of just its audio production, I would recommend this 
for numerous reasons. Not only is it cost effective being free, it's stable, it's a secure operating system, all that kind of stuff. And with the exception of some of the intricacies that come with using Linux, just, you know, you can, once you get it installed, you pretty much don't have to worry about it too much. You just have to learn how to use it. So um, yeah, if I can work it out, anyone can work it out. Thanks again for watching guys. My name's Shane. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. I appreciate that. This video took ages to make. I can already tell even in the editing process, it's gonna be brutal. But yeah, if you wanna see more videos like this as well, uh, leave me some suggestions. Happy to do more along these lines. This is definitely something I would recommend if you wanna save a few bucks or turn an old computer into something other than landfill. I think that's important. You know, grab an old computer, chuck Linux on it, and you should be good to go. It'll handle it on the most part, unless it's a piece of junk. But any modern computer should be able to handle this software. So thanks again for watching. Catch you soon. See ya.